Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Tech Driven. Today we're going to be talking about a few different things, like the tech news, and why we haven't been <laughs> posting videos since 2013, and a quick update of what to expect on this channel. And yes, the channel is back. We're going to be posting videos. Stick around. <laughs> All right, so we're back. Um, it's been like eight or seven years. The last video that was posted on this channel was October 26, 2013, which is insane. Now that video and a bunch of others have been, rem not removed, but delisted from the channel. Um, I will get into that in a minute, but basically that's more so for, as the wishes from Dave. So it will be going forward, um, it will be solely me doing everything on the channel. Um, as for the name on the channel, I have rebranded the channel from thetechsource.tv and it has been retired that name and techdriven.tech is going forward. Techsource.tv, because te someone else is using TechSource, I didn't want us to be confused with them or them to be confused with us. Very unlikely for us to be confused with them because they're much bigger and have a much larger audience than us. But just to keep things simple, and not cause any issues going forward with naming or branding or whatever, I created a new name. So techdriven.tech will be the full name going forward and uh, I hope you guys like it. Now videos to expect going forward will be our weekly tech news that we had before. So basically the same roster of videos we had before, but for anyone that's new, weekly tech news, you know, product reviews and overviews, as well as computer builds, and other fun DIY projects. So off to my side here, I have a uh, older Sandy Bridge system. That is our science PC and PC we're gonna be using for any case reviews or thermal testing of coolers. Uh, yeah, the setup's getting a bit old, so I might need to buy something a little bit newer, um, for maybe if you're doing some thermal testing. But that will do for now. Um, as f And um, yeah, so that's kind of what to expect. You know, for the weekly tech news, I'm planning to probably release some Sundays or Mondays. And any other content extra to that will be released probably midweek, if not Friday. And I wanna take my time uh, refining that video, editing it, massaging it, making it as best as it can be, so I don't wanna rush it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy. And thank you to the 15,000 people who are still subscribed to the channel and everyone who kept commenting and pushing me forward to uh, saying kind words, saying, yes, that we missed the channel, we missed seeing your content, uh, your opinions, and your style. Um, that's what really pushed me over the edge to rebuild the channel. So thank you to everyone, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Intel, uh, a name, you know, right now, maybe not the hottest, but Intel's coming out with some new chips in 2021, uh, which Intel's kind of confirmed literally like the day before AMD released their, uh, they had their big keynote of the new Ryzen 5000 chips, and they're like, hey, we're releasing Rocket Lake. Pay attention to us, guys. And it's like, Everyone's like, yeah, cool, awesome. AMD's doing some really cool shit over here, so bye. But some <laughs> other interesting things, I guess the successor to Rocket Lake is gonna be Alder Lake S, it looks like. Um, from the leak that, you know, that came out recently, it looks like it's gonna be running on a new LGA 1700 socket versus the older LGA 1200 socket. So what does that mean? It's actually gonna be a physically bigger chip, which is interesting, and it may actually use their new you know, big core, you know, multiple small core techno um, kind of technology or architecture that they're using. And it's be running um, apparently on their 10 nanometer uh, manufacturing node, which will be kind of interesting. because they're gonna be, f if this actually happens, they will finally move off their, you know, 14 nanometer plus, 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 plus architecture, um, which was fine. And it works fantastic in the IPC and you know power consumption okay and the heat on the 14 nanometer plus 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 has gotten a little high and they've kind of ran out of packaging so this is great news so we'll see what happens other cool interesting features that might have that might come with it is ddr5 and pci express 5.0 so that's pretty cool but i can't see that coming out uh, at, maybe till 2022 or maybe late 2021 i can't see intel releasing new chips at q1 2021 and then maybe a few months later or at the end of the year, a whole new range again. But can't really put it past them. So maybe Rocket Lake's gonna be a stopgap and then this is gonna be the 
you know, fully new, completely rethought out Intel 12th generation chips. So let's talk about AMD now. So let's move over from Team Blue to Team Red. So pretty cool. So Team Red, you know, this past month, they have been on fire. When their uh, press release dropped, uh, or live stream dropped of the new Ryzen Zen 3, Ryzen 5000 chips, everyone blew up and was like, yep, I need that. Sign me up right now. <laughs> uh, even including myself, I was like, I just got a 3800X last, uh, you know, last December and I don't really need an upgrade, but I want that because that looks interesting. Um, so I'm kind of interested in that, you know, let's do a quick overview of the lineup. So the lineup at the top of the range, you got the 50, 5950X, you know, that's a, you know, 16 core, 32 thread, almost high-end desktop level HTD, you know, high-end extreme desktop CPU, but it's at the mainstream socket. So x570 b550 b450 x470 support awesome great you know people like me with an x with two x470 boards um asus is supporting and saying yeah we're upgrading we're, you know you can upgrade your bios and move forward so that's great and then you have you know uh 5900x which is 12 core 24 thread then you have a 5800x which would be a direct replacement for my current chip uh eight thread 16 c uh, 16 thread eight cores 16 threads geez and then you have the 5600x which is kind of the sweet spot you know coming at the lowest you know 300 dollars us and that's where a lot of people are going to shop right um but this week uh some interesting rumors came out saying in early 2021 expect to see a 30 uh not a 3600 a 5600 so that'll be cool and that's going to be at a, you know an 80 dollar price reduction at 220 us and you know i have a 3600 over there and that is a fantastic chip for the money and tons of people have been dropping those in the computers having great results like you're getting almost the same game performance as some of the top end ryzen systems it does great productivity it's, it's a fantastic well-rounded cpu so i'm looking forward to seeing that um, and that'll be really interesting as well as some other interesting news that came out this week about amd's uh, zen 3 chips apparently ddr4 4000 will be the sweet spot for when it comes to getting that one-to-one -one infinity fabric uh, ratio, you know, before it was 36, I believe it was 3600 because that's what I run in all my systems, or it was 3800. I, uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, I think it was 3800 megahertz, but I know 3600 is kind of a, when it comes to price, it's a, it's a decent spot and you can get good timings with 3600. I, I've had good results with 3600, but 4000 is the new sweet spot. Wow. And I know Ryzen really benefits from good memory because I've played with a few different kits of memory in this rig and the other rig. And you really see performance gains in gaming benchmarks, uh, Cinebench score, uh, and even just regular gaming. You do see it, and in productivity tasks. Uh, putting good memory with tight timings really helps. So it's really interesting to see what AMD's coming out with. I might pick up a chip, uh, depending on availability. I really hope they do it uh, well, and there's a lot of chips available on launch because I know the 3300X, I have not seen a single one since launch coming in stock. All right, so moving from Team Red, to Team Green. <laughs> so moving over to NVIDIA, there's some really cool, interesting things that came out from NVIDIA this week. Uh, first thing is, well, NVIDIA's kind of given up on selling graphics cards on their own website. I guess, you know, from all the bots and other issues they've had with the RTX 3000 launch, uh, they have decided to shift all that load over to, you know, different retailers. Uh, one of the main ones would be, are gonna be, is gonna be Best Buy in the States. I'm not really sure what they're doing here in Canada for us. Um, I would love to get my hands on one of the FE cards. I have a 1080 Ti FE. It's a fantastic card, really, really well built, and I like the look of the 3080 FE card. That's probably, you know, amazingly, I would probably keep that card with this original cooler and not water cool it, because it just looks so cool. And even from the reviews, it looks like the thermals aren't that bad, and it's not even that loud. So it'd be really interesting to see how that, that plays out, because a lot of the uh, partner cards aren't the prettiest like evga one eh, it, you can put googly eyes on it it looks really funky and those are the red on it ugh. and the rgb that it has on it like i like my rgb but like the way they did it no the asus ones are decent gigabyte ones are hit and miss the zotac ones kind of eh, their cards haven't been the prettiest i'm trying to think of any other ones off the top of my head but like yeah oh uh, yeah there's the msi ones too and they're okay um actually yeah they're not bad looking but they're just like really bulky some of the partner cards compared to the founder's card 
So it'd be really interesting. I hope like maybe Zotac can make like a small version because they've always been good at like doing kind of small versions of cards. Like when they had the GTX 1080 Ti, they had like a tiny mini version, which was pretty cool. So that'll be interesting to see what happens. So basically, apparently right now, Best Buy in the States is selling the cards. Um, I don't know what they're doing for around the world or, you know, at least in Canada. Um, so we'll see what happens. It'd be really interesting to see. So continuing on with uh, RTX 3000 cards, EVGA has released a new BIOS for, it's really tuned for the enthusiast extreme overclockers. Now out of the box, the EVGA 3080 uh, FTW3 Ultra cards ship with a max TDP of 400 watts. Now this new BIOS, uh, beta BIOS that they have released, and it's on their form and I'm gonna link it below, if you are one of the lucky owners and you really want to push your card to the limit, they, it now has a max TDP of 450 watts. So you get a 50 watt improvement um, just with the BIOS update. So it looks like they've kind of peeled back some of the limits and said, yeah, you can turn it up a little bit more. So that'll be really cool. And they are stressing that this is a beta BIOS. It's really targeted for users who want the maximum performance and you really should have good adequate cooling in your case. You know, the extra, when you're pushing that much watch, as well as they're also recommending a 80, 850 watt plus gold certified power supply at the minimum, which is pretty crazy. So it does have some steep power requirements. They have all the steps on how to flash your card. Um, it'd be really interesting to see, you know, some benchmarks of before and after of what you actually can get out of the card. Um, but that's really cool to see it's directly from the manufacturer, not, you know, uh, community made BIOS, you know, removing power limits or any of the safety um, guards right from the manufacturer. So I wouldn't doubt this might actually be even warranty covered if God forbid a grenade to the card, but that's really cool to see. Um, and hey, I'm all for getting the maximum performance out of something you already paid, you know, over a thousand dollars for. So moving on to our last bit of news here, it's from Asus and Asus has released a line of gaming products that are themed around Gundam, which is super cool i think uh i'm not you know massive into you know the gundam anime and and, and all the different uh, models you can make and all that stuff but i just think it's super cool to see you know a big brand like asus doing something totally different uh they've now made gundam themed video cards motherboards uh keyboards <laughs> it's just a whole bunch of different things so one of the main ones is there's the asus rog maximus uh Extreme Gundam board comes with a pre-installed water block. The whole board is painted white, black, and red. Uh, oh, white, black, and no, the board itself is black. The main, uh, I guess, mono block for the motherboard is white and it has blue, gold, and red accents, which is really cool. As well as they have a 1660 Ti, I don't know, it's a GTX 1660 uh, video card that also matches it and it has you know the same color scheme but it has white fans the overall look of the card is white so it's really cool and then they even have monitor uh power supply coolers like it's just insane so they went out and branded everything i would love to see more manufacturers do things like this i remember uh you know back in the 2000s video cards would come with like video games on them so at, at back in the day at ati which is now AMD Radeon, but ATI Radeon had, uh, you know, their their uh, Ruby character on their cards and other things, or they'd have a Doom 3 card and, and stuff like that. So I would love to see video cards coming back with like cool graphics and logos and things inspired from other popular, t uh, you know, kinds of, let's say shows or games and things like that. I think that would be really cool. You know, granted, I love my super sleek and clean look of my system, but I think, you know, theme builds it would be really cool. One of the builds I'm kind of working on with a friend is we're gonna do a Milwaukee's Tools theme build. So it's gonna be red, black, and white with the Milwaukee logo for the Milwaukee Tools because he's a woodworker but plays video games uh, with us. And I think, you know, a Milwaukee Tool build would be really suit him. So we're planning that out. And that's gonna be something to look for on the channel. But I think this as a Gundam theme um, build, if you're into that, that's awesome. I think it's freaking awesome. Now, I'm not even huge into it, but I think it's sweet. I think that'd be a really cool computer to build with all of the parts. All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap up our first episode of techdriven.tech. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, it was quite a journey for me making it. It's been a while since I've stepped out in front of the camera, 
But again, I want to say thank you to the 15,000 people who are still subscribed and to every single person that took time out of their day to leave a nice comment uh, over the last eight years, pushing me forward to bring back the channel. So thank you to each and every one of you. Um, I just want to remind everyone, you know, if you do like what you're watching, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, turn on that notifications bell because apparently subscribing really doesn't do anything for you um, and hit the like button and you know leave some kind comments below of anything I discussed today I'd love to talk to everyone in the comments below um, also remember to check out our Facebook page um, I'm gonna be posting some you know behind the scenes stuff there as I you know work on different things so the link for that is below as well as on the YouTube community page so anyways guys thank you for watching I hope you had a great day um, and see you soon